What's up, everybody? Don't forget, there's two spoiled locations now. I'm at the brand new one right off the 91 freeway at Arlington. You can spoil yourself. You can spoil come in here 10 minutes you're in and you're out you're back on the road go check out spoiled local business locally owned and operated and they've got the location off the 215 freeway at alessandro and this one the brand new one here half of uh, the 91 at arlington i felt spoiled it was great i got in easy i mean the price was the best the price is just helped me out and, and what i really enjoyed about it is that they explained to me what was going on today and I feel like when I walked out of here, I just felt, felt so special. I said I had a new boyfriend. His name is Spoil. <laughs> you got your flowers. And I got yeah. <laughs> And welcome to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. It is Wednesday, first pitch around 6.05 p.m. as we usually do. Always a couple minutes late, but we got a really big, juicy show for you tonight. Uh, trying to push this sports conversation forward. There's a lot going on in the world right now. There's a lot going on with sports as we try to uh, reopen more sec uh, sectors of our, of our world, including the economy and sports and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but a little bit later in the show... We are going to be joined by the head coach of the Great Oak High School Cross Country team, who are the perennial state and national power for high school cross country. Doug Souls will join us. Also, the head football coach at him in high school, Dennis Gregovich, because we, we finally got a look at what the the new Rain Cross Conference is going to look like for high school football. And Hemet, people forget that Hemet was moved into the Rain Cross Conference and into the Sun Belt League. So we're going to talk with Coach Gregovich as well, but we're going to start off the show with one of our most favorite guys in the entire world, and I am not talking about Jeff Gorham. It's what? David Patrick, the head, the head basketball coach at UC Riverside. We love you too, Jeff. Uh, but Coach Patrick, how are you doing right now? Well, what's the life of a coach right now? Because you haven't been able to do a whole lot. Hey, guys. How are you? Thanks for having me on your show. Well, I'm just dreaming about this gym behind me. That's what's been going on for, for the, last, the last four months. So I couldn't be there, so I put it in my background. But uh, – you just kind of like Groundhog Day, man, trying to get through every day and just try to 
keep our team together, our staff together, and just find a way to, to, to get an edge whichever way we can during this during this pandemic we're in. Now, I know the big Jeezy somewhere in there because the way Zoom works, I know, Coach, you're a Zoom expert, and I'm trying to get to that point. Um, <laughs> but as soon as Jeff opens his mouth, the camera shot should switch over to the big Jeezy. Jeff, are you there? I am here. Yes. And you know what? I need a cool background. And I'm the only place in my house where there's not like clothes or toys or a, a big dog or my children. By the way, my wife went back. The, I guess the world is back open because she went to the dentist today. Oh, yeah. She's not back. So I had to bribe my kids with candy, uh, graham crackers, and my cell phone just to keep them out of the room for the next half hour or so. <laughs> That's You're a great. smart That's man. Great. I, I bribe mine on the computer there over here watching the Netflix or something over here <laughs> to the right of me. <laughs> so, Coach, I wanted to ask you, have you, been, have you had to be like everyone else, like Jeff and myself, where you're – a teacher at home because you got kids as well and everyone's been doing the school at home to finish up this last semester look yeah we were all the way up until the end of end of may we were we had class in the mornings and and uh, they weren't allowed to be on their devices until they finished finished class because you know these kids love love roblox and i'm, I'm caught up with all the new games these kids play <laughs> yes. TikTok and yes. tic tac toe all that other stuff but uh we, we had them on a schedule you know i did have my, my i'm pretty strict on them so uh, the, the online schooling was a little bit uh, was harder than coaching in the Big West. I'd say that much. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when, I, are, when are we going to see a Coach Patrick uh, TikTok? It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Fourth of July, we'll drop it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are like me, but I, you know, I I'm an educator, and I have to educate my kids. I want to send my kids to the principal every single day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to get rid of them. They're horrible. I, I bet, man. We can't even send them to my camp. Camp's been at camp shut down, so we can't even give them a camp. Yeah, that's the worst. I miss hoop camp. I, you know, I did like four or five camps last year, and my legs. I'm going to come back 900 pounds. I lost a bunch of weight. <laughs> it's been hard. I, what do they call it? The, the quarantine 15, because everyone has, and, you know, some of us have been productive at home, and then we're doing yard work and, and doing some other, you know, things around the house to stay active. But a lot of us, and, and I'm guilty as well, like it's so easy to be like, well, that looks like a good show on Netflix. And like three hours later, you're like, oh, my gosh, what? Are, I haven't done anything. You know, where the, where's the day gone? I will tell you, I've tried to stay on routine and get up at the same time I do when I worked and have the same calls I've had, but it, it becomes hard. I, I, I know that if I if I didn't have a schedule in front of me, I'd be I'd be lost. I'd finish Ozarks if I didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, I did want to ask you, like you know, thanks to technology, I, I guess you are able to stay connected with your coaching staff. Um, and also, you know, some of your players and whatnot. But, you know, is there anything that you can do to just kind of get ready for the season? Do you start looking at the other Big West teams or maybe your non-conference schedule? Um, can you kind of go through like, okay, what's, what's the rotation going to look like for this upcoming year? Are there things that you can do so you, at least you feel like you're getting ready for the season? You know what? Definitely. We, we, we've met with the team once a week and tried to go over um, when it's permissible and not allowed at the moment, but we'd go over offense and defense once a week with them and just try to give them some semblance of, of at least visually of what we did good last year versus what we did bad and where we can improve at. Um, so we've tried to do that because we do have some new, new, new players coming on, on the team this year. Um, and then the other part is just meeting with my staff. We meet daily, um, whether it might be by phone or zoom. I don't think they want to see me. Uh, as much as <laughs> as much as they can so we can catch up over the phone sometimes but um that's been challenging you know trying to get scheduling done which you talked about is uh, we have some of our schedule done for next year um but trying to even schedule games during a, during this pandemic has been tougher than most years because some universities don't know how much money they'll have to play pay or what teams can travel etc so that's been a new challenge in this in this new environment but we definitely uh, try to stay abreast of what's going on well, Coach, just about, I'd say about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, um, I interviewed uh, Tamika Smith-Jones, the athletic director at UCR. And, you know, of course, we talked about, you know, what's this upcoming sports season going to look like? And there's and there's so many things still in play. It's very fluid. Um, I mean, could, could you see a scenario where maybe even your upcoming schedule, even though you have a schedule, could it, could it maybe still change a little bit, be pushed back, drop some games, add some games? I mean, it, it, are things still very even fluid for your schedule for the upcoming year? 
Yeah, look, I would think it's fluid. I think we've been told it's going to be as is right now, but as we know the world, it, it changes daily uh, in terms of in terms of the cases and what happens, not only in California, but the other states that we may may have to travel to. And so I think it's a, it's a fluid system. Uh, I think the advantage of us is when they talk about fall sports, it doesn't include us, you know, we're, we're a winter sport. And so um, I think we'll take out our lead by what happens with the fall sports and if, when they start, if they push them back. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going ahead as planned, but it's definitely, it's definitely an uncharted water for all of us and something that we're trying to be prepared for if they do push the season back or, or, or force us to, to move games, et cetera. Now, Coach, you know, I, I'm part of the, uh, the the UC Riverside program, and the last time I think you and I saw each other was on that faded uh, Friday the 13th um, where we were shut down. I mean, as a coach, and you talk to the players and your staff, I mean, how disappointing uh, or bittersweet, I should say, was it for the way the this, this season ended and the way the Highlanders were playing so well I mean, it's going to be one of those things you're, we're always going to talk about, What you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda, and the possibilities. I mean, we had a shot of making the tournament with the way we were playing. Uh, do you think the guys feel that and are using that to their advantage here in the offseason? Look, Jeff, yeah, you know, that, that was hard. You know, when you, had, you were in the room when you had to address the team and address you guys as the staff, and that, that was tough. And, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think we were – we were trending in the right direction towards the end of the year, which, which, which is what you want to do going into the conference tournament. Um, um, so I, I felt mostly, and you know that for the seniors, you know, the Kai Cabellas and the Kimbe Martin, who, who, whose career ended, you know, at the drop of a hat and guys that really worked um, academically and, and on the court to at least, you know, finish off their year with their last game or finish off their career as a collegiate, um, not being able to do that, you know, and then, I think our returners have that burning desire in, the, in, in their heart and their belly to 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 motivate them over this over this off season, and uh, because we, we we felt it was taken away from us and obviously out of our control and for the betterment uh, of everybody in the nation. But it's something that uh, is definitely motivating us uh, moving forward into next season. Well, coach, we need sports. I, I feel, at least in my humble opinion, so bad right now and for a lot of different reasons. Um, hopefully sports can be a, a thing that can unite um, a lot of different people, a lot of different colors, a lot of different races. I mean, I even look at your own roster and you've got guys from all over the world, all different races. And I feel like sports, the only thing that matters is the color of the jersey you have on. I love sports for that fact. I, I think the whole world could look at sports and, and probably gain a lot from it. Um, can you just, just describe what it means when, when you have a team, as you're, as you're the head coach of a team, to see everyone come together for the common cause? You're trying to beat your opponent, and like it doesn't matter where you're from or you know what language you speak or the color of your skin. Like Man, it's all about the blue and gold, and you're trying to beat the team that's across the way. No, a pre great question, Pep. And look, I, I addressed the, the, I don't know if it's the elephant in the room, but what's going on in America at the moment with the Black Lives Matter movement and, you know, what happened to George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and um, the, the, the list of others. And I addressed that last Saturday, um, two Saturdays ago, actually, you know, as a coach, because I think it's my, my, my duty as, their, as the person put in charge of this program to address what's going on. And the one thing I talked about was what, what, you, what you talked about is, um, you know, my, my team and my staff, we're a mix. You know, we have Australians, Italians, Filipinos, uh, Blacks on my staff. We're a reflection of, 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 of what society should be and we're accepting. And so is our team. We have Australia, New Zealand, Chicago, Texas, Oakland, Inland Empire. Like, it's an eclectic mix and we all get along. And our hope is that the, the, the world can get to that place one day. Um, and... Uh, I'm, I'm, it's upsetting what's gone on in, in the world, but it's maybe uh, for the greater good, I guess, if, if, if the needle can be moved in the right direction. Um, but it's definitely uh, something that's been addressed and been, been addressed with me as a coach and something I hope that our, our world and our, and, and our country can, get, can move in the right direction to. 
Yeah, if the world could just resemble a basketball team, I think we'd all be yeah. uh, in, in a good spot right now. But coach, between you know what's going on lately, and you know, and of course the pandemic. I mean, nothing, nothing has been, I guess you would say, normal since you guys left that Big West tournament. And Jeff brought it up. It, you know, it was like, I, in fact, it was the first game, right? It was the first game of the Big West tournament, and you guys didn't get a chance to play. And now, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, the pandemic kept us all at home, so you didn't even get a chance to, you know, be with your guys or at least be practicing or doing something with your team. Has it been hard as a head coach? I mean, because we've none of us have gone through this. Has it been hard to just be kind of separated from from everything for so long? It's been extremely hard. Starts with my wife first because she's not used to it. <laughs> she's not used to a coach being home uh, at this time of the year so often, you know, and and. I, I tell you what, I've become, uh, I've got a new appreciation for what, what my wife has to, has to deal with my kids on a daily, on a daily basis. The, the scout report she's got is every day. You know, I only have about 30 times a year. Um, so that's been, that's been new in this, this atmosphere. But the hardest part is just you, you're used to your kids, your players coming by your office, or your student athletes coming by your office, or sticking your head in the gym at this time of year and they're in there shooting. Um, it's, it's the time you kind of connect as a group when the pressure's not on you to win games, you know, and that's the part, um, that's going to be a challenge for, for, for every coach, not only, not only me as the head, head men's coach here, but it's something that I think the teams that get to the camaraderie quicker and the culture quicker and, and the connectivity quicker will be the ones that you see, um, have success next year on the playing fields or on the courts. Now, now, you know, I want to say this just because I've been around this program uh, for the last, you know, four plus years, uh, the last two with you, uh, DP. And I will say this. I've been around Division One basketball. I've been around professional basketball, high school basketball, youth basketball. I have never seen a closer knit group than I have with UC Riverside. There's no divisiveness. They are all on the same page. Uh, you know, you lose a couple players uh, through graduation. But I've never seen a group of coaches and players get along so well as I have with your uh, staff and players at UC Riverside. What is it going to mean? I mean, last year you had these guys on campus early, but you have a couple new additions. And they're going to – I mean, just walking into this program, the way it's heading on the upswing, uh, can you tell us a little bit about these new guys and how they'll integrate or how they'll fill into this program that you've built the last couple of years? Look, I, I appreciate you saying that, Jeff. And that, that's something we try to build. Like, like the wins and losses will come, but I think you got to have a connectivity from, from, as you know, from the manager all the way up to the, whoever the quote unquote leading scorer is. And if there's that, if there's that vertical alignment, I think you, good, good things will happen. And uh, I think we're on the right track. Um, so when we brought in this class, like, we, you know, we have two transfers coming in and, uh, and Jock Perry from St. Mary's and, uh, and Flynn Cameron from DePaul. And uh, those two um, were from, you know, the Australian team and Australian and New Zealand team and, and, and know our guys. And that was important to me um, in terms of a grad transfer coming in and, and being a part of what we're about. So I know what they're about from the programs they're from. Um, we bring in Will Tattersall, who's from the uh, Center of Excellence in Australia. Uh, he's familiar with our team um, as well. And then our other freshman, Jalen Anderson, who's coming from Phoenix, uh, has come over maybe three or four times this year during the season and spent some time with our guys. And uh, what the NCAA allowed us to do was integrate our freshmen if we wanted to with our team at the moment. So we've done that from day one and just tried to get them on the same page with our, with our core group because I think the separator, at least for us, is, is how tight we are as a group. And if we continue to grow on that, then good things will happen to us. But if we bring in some guys that don't fit the mold, this thing can go off the tracks pretty quickly. So I think uh, we have the right pieces in place in terms of character uh, to fit in with the group we have. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you, and this is probably a question that maybe you don't have an answer to yet, but for example, like, you know, we cover a lot of high school football, and I know some some of the private schools that are high school football teams, they have either already started summer workouts or they already have a date in the next week or so that they're going to start summer workouts. And I feel like some of the the public high schools are just still kind of searching for answers at this point of when they can get going. Um, I know you're a winter sport, so you got a little bit of time. I know the fall sports are on the clock right now, but have you heard anything about, you know, hey, we, we can 
we can get back in the gym in a month we can you know uh have workouts in a month or a couple of weeks or three months from now have you heard anything of like a timeline to answer your question yes and no i think our hope is you know august one the fact that we're on the quarter system like we have an eight-week period with by the ncaa to be able to work with our guys and so what we've kind of planned out is let's try to just get the guys back in august august one for, for workouts and just lead them into the season um, from that so i think we have a little bit more of an advantage in terms of being a quarter system we don't start uh, classes till october maybe that gives us some leeway to do that but there's been nothing set in concrete um into actually when we can and can't but um our last conversation looked like we were looking towards the end of july to possibly try to get staff back on campus and then when it's safe and secure then work on trying to get our student athletes back back on campus well, Jeff, I know you'll appreciate this. Today they announced Disneyland is opening back up July 17th. So if you can go to Disneyland, I think you can have a, a UCR basketball practice. You're darn right. You better. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> here's the sad thing. You know, I'm, I, we're big ticket holders. You know, we were there the night they closed. Uh, my <laughs> wife and I, the day after uh, we were at the Big West tournament, and my wife goes, we got to get to Disneyland. They're going to close it. Well, we bought we bought tickets to one of the hotels just so we could get in early on that uh, 17th. Uh, my wife got uh, hotel reservations today, so we'll be hitting to Disneyland uh, the 17th as well. Are you serious? The day it reopens? Yeah, it cost us a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's been waiting for you, brother. Mickey and Goofy. Yeah. Been waiting. <laughs> been you were talking about everybody that's in your locker room. You got you know you've got all these different guys, but then you have an alien like me. Who's uh, you know, you you accept me, so I'm okay. Oh man, stop, stop, stop! You're the good-looking one in the group. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a problem. That's a, that's a big... yeah, yeah. You haven't seen my group, Pep. <laughs> yeah. I saw uh, I saw uh, enough of Dragon and Callum's beards to oh, know man. that's a that's a that's a sh some shady customers. <laughs> they need some haircuts and some shaves. It, it, there have been some different looks on this on these zooms, and and, and and Jeff travels with us, so he knows my my, my protocol when we when we travel. Uh, they are not listening to protocol on these zooms, put it that way. But they they got some freedom to do that. I will say this, and Jeff, you will back me up. Coach Patrick is always the best dressed guy in the entire gym. Always. Yes, I, I've never seen him wear the same pair of shoes twice. Oh gosh! Because hey, I'm trying to get on a streak, mate. If we can get on a two-game winning streak, I'll wear the same shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coach, are you? Before we wrap this up, are you superstitious in any way? Do like, do you wear the same undershirt, the same socks? Do you eat the same food or anything on on a game day? No, the only thing I do is I I, I gotta have coffee in the uh, in the room before before the games. That's my one my one superstition. So when you guys come in and do the pregame i usually have a, a coffee with me and it's got to be from i won't even say this because they don't sponsor us i won't say where it's from <laughs> <But> yeah <laughs> so yeah that's um that's my one superstition other than that i'm i'm, I'm pretty good <laughs> well coach we always appreciate the time it's good it's good seeing you we haven't talked in a while so it's good seeing you as well i know man i know jeff's been meaning telling me i'm coming over the house i'm still waiting on the invite mate Hey, I got my big dog over here. I got my pool. I got several lovely beverages. And I got a, you know, I have a 14 year old son. Your daughter's the same age. We could, I'm telling you, I'm trying to pawn him off of the nicest kids ever. Right. And you're at a social distancing, no chance. It'll be social distancing from your son to my daughter for life. <laughs> I want to be related to you. And I'm telling you, we're going to hook our kids up. I'm going to be a part of the Patrick family. <laughs> we're related by a head. <laughs> well thank you coach we we always appreciate the time we we appreciate you you know jumping on the show and being candid with us and again there's more questions and answers right now but thank you for uh passing on what you know to us as well and everyone that's watching out there right now and as always pep and jeff thanks again and, and go highlanders Yes, sir. That's head coach David Patrick joining us here on the Inland Sports Show. We always appreciate his time. He's a very, very busy man, uh, but he always makes time for us, and we do appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break uh, here on the Inland Sports Show. When we come back, we'll uh, do a little bit of high school cross country coming up here on the Inland Sports Show with Great Oak head coach Gray, uh, Doug Souls. We'll be right back on the Inland Sports Show. So, did awesome. you Thank you, guys.
we talk about this a lot with our student athletes. You know, I'm, you know, we talk about working hard. We talk about grinding. We talk about you know uh, how hard you work. But at the end of the day, it's about you know applying the right effort. You know, if you're constantly doing things that are easy for you, that's not really the right effort. The right effort moves you out of your comfort zone. The right effort moves you closer to your goal. So, you know, I talk about, you know, what are you doing at night? What are you doing to prep for the next day? Are you staying up at night, being on social media? Or are you, you know, watching television? Are you, you know, eating junk food? Are you getting a good night's sleep, which is gonna help prepare you mentally and physically to grow the next day? Is your training moving you out of your comfort zone? Are you, are you doing things that, are you working on your weaknesses? You know, or are you doing things that you're already good at? So, you know, there's, there's a lot of effort. You know, a lot of kids say they work hard, but you're not working hard unless you're doing things that aren't easy. Because if you're doing what's easy, it's just, you know, it's not really hard work. It's, it's work, but it's not the right work. So if you're ready to put in that right work, the right effort, then come on down and check us out at the Boost Performance Center. Hey, what's up everybody? Don't forget, there's two spoiled locations now. I'm at the brand new one right off the 91 freeway at Arlington. You can spoil yourself, you can spoil your car. You come in here, 10 minutes, you're in and you're out, you're back on the road. Go check out Spoiled, local business, locally owned and operated. And they've got the location off the 215 freeway at Alessandro. And this one, the brand new one here, off of uh, the 91 at Arlington. I felt spoiled, it was great. I got in easy. I mean, the price was the best. The price is just helped me out. And, and what I really enjoyed about it is that they explained to me what was going on today. And I feel like when I walked out of here, I just felt, felt so special. I said I had a new boyfriend. His name is Foyle. <laughs> you got your flowers. And I got yeah. your flowers. <laughs> And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. A big thanks to David Patrick, the head basketball coach for UC Riverside, for joining us here live on the show. Kind of shed a little bit of light of what's going on with the Highlanders as they try to prepare as much as they can for the upcoming season. But again, he, he pointed it out, basketball is a winter sport, so they've got a little bit of time uh, still in front of them. Fall sports are on the clock right now. And speaking of fall sports... Uh, we want to talk a little cross country on this show, and we should talk a lot more Great Oak High School cross country. I'll take the blame for that because they are so good, and we, they need a lot more uh, coverage on this show, that's for sure. Uh, we got the head coach of the Wolfpack, Doug Souls, joining us here live on the Inland Sports Show. And, and Coach, the loaded question that every coach gets when, when they come on this show is, what have you heard? When can you start practices? Because we are starting to reopen a little bit more across the board, whether it's the economy or, or schools. Um, what, what have you heard down there at Great Oak High School? Yeah, it's, it's pretty, uh, everybody's pretty tentative with the things they're doing. It's looking like uh, in the next week or two, we're probably going to be able to start opening up with some conditioning stuff. Um, so I think most of the sports you'll start seeing after June 22nd range, starting to do some conditioning. Um, and then for us, for cross country, we don't actually start until July 13th. So we have a little bit of time. Um, but I think most of the sports uh, in our area will start opening up after about June 22nd for at least conditioning, maybe not any balls or anything like that, but um, getting out there and getting the kids fit and getting things going the right direction. Yeah, I've seen, just for example, like if you go on social media, there's, you know, private schools out there um, here in the Inland Empire, across the state, you know, for football at least, they've started workouts, uh, again, not necessarily maybe with a football in their hands, but, you know, maybe some cardiovascular kind of stuff and just some fitness things in general. Um, so the, you know, there are, there are some things taking place, and I know Riverside County, for example, June 12th, which would be this Friday, um, they're going to reopen schools um i would think that would be enough time let's say you start in a week or two to get ready for the season am i am i right or does cross country need a, a bigger build up into their into their season in the fall 
Yeah, I mean, for cross country, we the kids are running whether we're out there with them or not, right? So they've got a base phase that they're building for. Uh, they got summer schedules, so they know what their what their mileage is, what they need to do, and you know, we don't usually work with them during this time of the year anyway. They're usually out there running, so um, you know, it kind of works really well for us. So we're still kind of on a break uh, as coaches, but the kids are out there working hard, and ultimately, uh, I think we'll see them coming back to us in in uh, mid July and. Hopefully we'll we'll pretty much be able to run with no issues at that point. We'll be able to just have normal practices. Well, coach, you went right into my next question. Was you know cross country uh, athletes? You know, I would think at least during this quarantine, they they would be of all sports the ones that are able to go out because we had even golf courses closed and tennis courts. But you could say, hey, get on a Zoom call or, or text your your runners and say, hey, uh, go out and run a couple miles today. Let me, I don't know, let me know your time or let me just know you're doing something. I, I feel like cross country, maybe of all the sports, uh, you guys were able to at least still push forward a little bit, right, and be ready for that upcoming year. Absolutely, yeah. I think our kids were pretty active. You know, when there's no direction, kids will fall off and sit and play Fortnite all day. But <laughs> when there's direction, they know what they need to do. They'll get out there and put in the work. So um, ultimately, we had our top 16 meetings where we get together with our top kids and plan out the season and, um, you know, get them all the uh, workouts that they need. And I, I know the kids were pretty pumped. Um, our boys team's pretty good this year. We should be one of the top couple teams in the country again uh, after we've taken second place in the nation two years in a row. So I know they're pretty pumped to get out there and, and try to seal the deal this year and get the victory. Uh, at Nike Cross Nationals. The girls team's young, but uh, pretty talented. So I think we'll we'll definitely be pretty good on both sides. So I know those kids are working hard. I'm sure further down the roster, there's going to be some work to do. Uh, but at the top end, I think they're working pretty hard. Coach, speaking of your teams, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's, what, six straight state championships, Division One for the boys. Right. And, the, and the girls have won like eight of the last nine. Does that sound about right? Yeah, we won eight of, eight of the ten in the eight last ten. decade. Yeah, we lost this last year by four points. Our number one girl unfortunately had the flu going into the state meet, and we weren't able to. We weren't able to do it. We still almost won and and uh, missed by four points. But we got second place. The the other girls ran their hearts out, and the boys I think won by ninety eight points. So it was a pretty big win uh, for Division One for the boys, and and that was our sixth in a row. And you know, if we run like we're capable of, hopefully we'll have seven in a row going uh, after this season for sure. Coach, something you brought up, and um, this hits home for me too, because just with my own kids, that you said, you know, during this quarantine period, you know, you got to give some structure, maybe a schedule for your athletes, because if you just kind of, you know, go dark and you don't talk to them for two or three months, like who knows what they're doing, maybe just sitting on the couch doing nothing, which probably might be the worst case scenario if you're a cross country runner. But how important was it just to use, um, you know, technology, Zoom or, or anything to just say, hey guys, you know, how are you doing? Are you, you know, how many miles did you run this week? You know, just because that way you can, you know, keep that connection going, right? And, and make sure that they're, they're staying on par for when the season rolls around and it looks like it will roll around. It looks like we will have it. Yeah, I mean, it's been nice to be able to do meetings, and, and I was able to hold a couple classes. I have most of those kids in my first period uh, cross-country class, so I was able to actually bring those kids in and have conversations with them and give them updates and let them know what they needed to do and stay motivated. So, you know, a bit of an advantage there because they all pretty much had to check in at that point anyway. Uh, but for that class, I had them doing a log uh, for me of what they were actually accomplishing. So I was able to kind of see who was working, who wasn't working, and and uh, just make sure that we're trying to keep them as active as possible. I'll tell you, I've got three kids of my own, and it's definitely you put five people in a house without getting out for ten weeks, man. It gets a little stressful. So, yeah, it's been crazy. Oh man, just put put on the running shoes and just leave the house on your own. Just go run out and get some fresh air once in a while, right? Yeah, try to. Yeah, my wife's been making me go out for walks. I told her, look, honey, there's no diets during the apocalypse. <laughs> I'm going to be just chilling here and having some food, but she's, she's been getting me out. She makes me go out for walks late at night and we just get out. There's nobody out there. It's kind of nice. So. Yeah. My, my kids, um, we, we bought a, a big new trampoline for our backyard. So I've been out there jumping with them just so I feel like I'm just not completely sitting around and binge watching every single show on Netflix and Disney plus. At least I feel like I'm doing something active. Yes. Yes. Um, I mean, ultimately our kids, you know, you got to take the devices at some point because otherwise they won't get out and do anything. You know, for me, I, I just sit in my office. I've got the TVs, you know, and all that stuff. And I get caught up too. my wife's the one that comes in and says, hey, we got to go do something. So she keeps us pretty active. Coach, I do want to go back to your team for a moment because um, I, I kind of wanted to put it in context. If people aren't, you know, big cross country fans, just how dominant Great Oak has been, um, especially like you pointed out the last decade for the boys and the girls. Um, 
just name drop quickly. Who who are some of those top runners that we should look for this upcoming season? Uh, on the girls' side, we've got some new runners. We've got uh, girls that were freshmen last year that have really kind of moved up into that top group. So I think you'll see um, Ashling Fabian will be up there and Kelly Gaffney. Those will probably be two of our better girls to be sophomores. Um, and then we're going to see Brianna Weidler, who, who unfortunately got injured right at the end of the season last year and missed out on a chance to run at state. Uh, but she's going to be a senior this year, and I think she'll probably be leading the way uh, quite a bit. Um, on the boys' side, we've got three senior boys, Mateo Joseph, John Worthy, and Christian Simone, that uh, all had tremendous seasons last year. And uh, those guys are going to be three of the best in the state next year, for sure. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time. And, and I guess the good news here is that uh, things are moving forward and it looks like, um, fingers crossed, that high school fall sports will kick off um, on time or near on time. And we'll, we'll see, hopefully, um, even a complete season. I hate to compare high school to like junior colleges, but we saw the junior colleges across California kind of roll out a plan where it'd be a, a condensed season and, and no state championships. But I don't want to put that out there because the CIF state office hasn't said anything like that yet. But, um, but at least we're getting closer to competition. At least we're getting closer to the first thing, which would be workouts and practices. Yeah, I think a lot of people want to see this season happen. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I know the people above us are, are doing everything that they can. There's a lot of people putting in a lot of time uh, I know my athletic director is putting in more time than he's getting paid for. So people are working hard. I'm sure that's probably the case across the board. And all we can do is just be patient and be thankful for those guys and the efforts they're putting in. Yeah, it's hard to come up with probably three or four or five different plans, depending what the next month or so uh, you know looks like for, for everybody around here. So uh, that's Doug Souls, the head cross-country coach at Great Oak High School. Coach, I always appreciate the time, and uh, I, I'm going to make a vow not to make it this long. We need to talk a lot more because you guys are doing a great job in, uh, in cross-country. I'm a fan of it. I just need to talk about it more here on the show. So thank you, Coach. Absolutely. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate it. All right, that's the great Doug Souls from Great Oak High School. We'll be back with more Inland Sports Show right after this. We'll talk some high school football with him at head coach. Den Welcome back to the Mike's Fitness Equipment Studio. It's the Inland Sports Show. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. Mike's Fitness Equipment. Check out the new storeroom on La Cadena. Quality fitness equipment at affordable prices. Mike's Fitness Equipment. And JoJo's Gorilla Dog, located in the Mountain Grove Shopping Center in Redlands. Let's be frank, not all dogs are created equal. JoJo's Gorilla Dog. I'm busy, I got things to do, but I really need an oil change. I just need something fast and affordable. Well, I'm right off the 91 in Arlington. Let's go check out Spoiled.
and they even got a 10 minute oil chain special. Up, lights reset on day one. Okay, looks like you're all set. Have a good one. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for everything. Spoiled quick quality oil change right off the 91 freeway at Arlington. The overtime program is really where it all started. So um, it's a complete off-season program where we do uh, strength training, speed training, we do nutrition prepping. Uh, we offer our athletes supplements at the end. Um, it has everything you need. We track progress, we track their weights, we do uh, performance testing. It's really a, a, a everything you need to prepare for your upcoming season. It's a great program. We've had a lot of great athletes get involved in it. And uh, we're going to be rolling out again this Shooter year. Audio. I get this is the most important hey, part coach, of, uh, of the offseason. You, you know, How's if you really need to get better, you need to really need to improve, you got to put the time in. I mean, to get stronger, to get faster, it takes time. Well, you can definitely visit our website at www.boosttrainingsystems.com. Uh, you can come oh, check us out at uh, 500 Harrington Street, Suite C1. <laughs> uh, check out the Boost Performance Everyone Center. Um, or you can now. contact us directly the, at 951-532-3903. Just yeah, send us a text. The, uh, the Kia Tigers, the, the Dinos, the, I don't know, the Samsung Lions. <laughs> Everything. There you go. <laughs> Welcome back Great. to the Mike's uh, Fitness Equipment no, Studio. Good, I, it's I'm the good. Inland Sports Show. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoil Quick Quality Oil Change. Spoil your...
And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. We appreciate you tuning in every single Wednesday night. First pitch about 6.05 p.m. is what we've been doing the last couple of weeks here. Again, uh, still live from my living room. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be back at the Mike's Fitness Equipment Studio at Teen Vision TV 16 uh, as schools are about to reopen here um, across Riverside County and the Inland Empire, which is great news. June 12th is that date at least given out by Riverside County today. So uh, June 12th would be this Friday. But join us live on the show right now. He is the head football coach at Hemet High School. And I was thinking about this guy. It was... <laughs> I think it was Friday night. Uh, we had family game night here at the Fernandez household. And one of the games we played was Yahtzee. And I thought of you, Coach Gregovich. You know that's my favorite term. I always like to say Yahtzee and <laughs> put the little dice out there, especially on the social media. It's one of my favorite things. And I just got to say, like, I got to be honest. It was the first time. Uh, do I have it over here? It was the first time that I had ever played Yahtzee. First time, and I completely dominated my family. That's a fun game to play. It's good. It's good. You get all the family involved, and oh, you know, it's really fun. Yeah, but good my times. wife was mad because two games in a row, I just destroyed everybody. And I'm like, "How do you play this? Oh, that's four in a row. What is that?" <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the scorecard somewhere down here. Uh, I, I wish I don't know. I should I should have grabbed it. But you, I was like, "Man, Coach Gregovich would be so proud of me right now. I just completely dominated tonight." 100%, but even I can't trademark that one because, like I said, I, I I stole that one. I won't tell you from who, but I love that saying. I think it's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach Gregovich, the head coach of the Hemet Bulldogs, join us here um, live on the Inland Sports Show. Before we start talking some football here, I, I, I there's a couple guys out there watching the show live right now. One of them is Coach Eric Galliano. Ah, my boy. Coach Galliano at San Jacinto. He wanted me to ask you, will Hemet oh. ever see the bell again? <laughs> I I sure hope so because I've told him I you know I'll be out going to eat somewhere and the the one lady who works over at our grocery store here she always reminds me she's like I'm like did you go to San Jacinto she goes yeah and she goes uh we got the bell and I'm like we're gonna we're gonna get it one time we're gonna get it one day so I know Galliano and I are talking we're not gonna end up playing this year but hopefully like next year um you know we're gonna get we're gonna get that game back I think that's the one him and I have talked about would like to lead off the season every year it's just so big between the communities and uh him and i of course you know knowing each other we have a good time and he does like to rub that one in you know football is just so so important to the people out there it, it's and there's great coaches great programs great players and whatnot and we love that rivalry so that you know that's kind of why i wanted to bring you on the show because i got i got to give a shout out to jim vaughn the uh, riverside poly athletic director he hooked me up with the the rain cross conference and what the football leagues will look like for this this upcoming year and i think i man hemet in the sunbelt league is awesome but my first thought was oh man what about hemet versus san Jacinto and some of those great matchups yeah, we, you know, and I guess I, I got to take some of the, I got to take some of the blame in it too, because we really didn't know who it was going to be. We were playing against what we had when I mean, you're trying to make everything fit in a schedule. So I was one of the ones that said, I think, I think this one needs to come off right now because we just didn't know who we were playing or how many games were going to be crossover. So I made that decision. My, you know, AD didn't have a problem with it. So we took it off, but you know, I, as soon as we got it off, I guess I really, it's a mistake. So I shouldn't, we should probably shouldn't have done it, but as long as we can get that thing back, and I know Galliano and I are on the same page and he has a wonderful athletic director, by the way. So I'm sure we can end up making that happen. Yeah. She's not too bad, right? Yeah. She's really good. <laughs> well, coach, listen, you know, again, we just had Doug souls on the cross country coach at, at great Oak. And you know, the, the question we ask every single coach when they come on this show is, you know, when are you going to start practicing? You know, what is the season going to look like? When are you going to see the, the guys again? When are you going to be on the field? So do you have any idea? Have you heard anything about when you might be out there again? Three minutes before I called you, I had a parent call and ask me the same thing. And I'm telling you, like I tell all, everybody, I did. As soon as, you know, we know, you'll know. Um, it's hard, but I guess what we're trying to do and I'm trying to make sure that we make happen is trying to get all the kids on the Google Meet or, you know, Zoom. We're allowed to use Google Meet, so we use that. Yeah. But what everybody I think has got to remember is when they do clear us, 
kids still need physicals. Coaches got to be cleared. Paperwork's got to be done. You know, to me, unless CIF's willing to change something or the districts are, this isn't going to be you could just jump back in and be able to go that day because how are these kids getting cleared? That become you know, that's a big question for me. So I think if you can keep them together as a group a little bit and at least they're not all spread out, the information gets out a little easier. And hopefully that transition is going to be a little you know easier to deal with. So because of, you know, this whole quarantine period, is there a dead period or are you in dead period or is there anything like that this summer? From, from what I understand... It, the CIF went ahead and waived the dead period. So because you could have used any of the time in June, you could pick the, you could pick the dead period as long as the whole school and all the sports were together on it with that date. So, you know, ours was going to be the last week in June through the 4th of July weekend. But I guess with everything going on now, they decided when it comes back, it's going to be let go. So... So let's just say for the uh, the sake of this conversation, because we, again, we know June 12th, which is Friday, that schools will technically be allowed to reopen. And then hopefully shortly after, we'll get some some guidance from whether it's the school districts or the, the county board of supervisors to say, hey, you know, sports activities can resume. Let's just say for the sake of this conversation, that that'll happen in, let's say, two weeks. So that'll put us about the end of June or so. I mean, that should be more than enough time, right, to ramp up and do a football season? I, I, I think so, and I think most of the coaches would agree. I mean, you'd like a couple of weeks to, you know, to get everybody conditioning and get back in that. But I'm, I'm old school, man. My dad coached, you know, in Ohio. I remember when they would start practice August 1st, and then they're playing by like the third week in August. So I, I think at some point we have to come back to that. I think everybody's you know, really under the same situations. I don't think anybody's going to really get ahead too much. I think kids that want to work out are finding ways to be creative and work out. And it's a lot different nowadays than it was before. These kids are just, you know, they're workers. They go out and work and they want to play and they've got goals and, you know, they're going to stay in shape. So hopefully, you know, that's true with a lot of our kids this year too. All right, coach, if, if my technology is going to work on this end, and again, this is a Proper uh, time to say Johnny Nunez and the team at Teen Vision TV 16. I love you guys. I miss you guys so much. I'm trying to do everything for my living room. I'm going to punch up a graphic that has the, the teams in the Sun Belt League real quick. Oh, I think it worked. This is great. Okay, so we've got uh, Hemet, JW North, Orange Vista, Paloma Valley, and Valley View. And Coach, I put this out on uh, on Twitter today. And when you when you look at the entire Rain Cross Conference, conference you have the Ivy League, the Sun Belt League, and the Inland Valley League. I think... In terms of top to bottom of just having great competitive games, I think the Sun Belt League is going to have some real battles. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. What do you think? There's some good ones. There's some there's some real good ones. I like all the matchups. I think a lot of the people, a lot of the people and coaches know each other. Well, you so and gonna, North last year. You and North had a had a crazy game uh, last year. We had we had a good game that went down. You know, it wasn't high scoring, but you know, it was interesting. And I, the one game that I'm really looking forward to the most, and I, l- I always loved playing against them. We were when I was at Tockwitz was I like playing Zomals, man. Yeah. You know, that's it was always good games. They're really great coaches. They're competitive. They get their kids to play. You know, love that one. But I love the J-Dub North. I'm looking forward to playing some of the teams I haven't played. So, you know, that's going to be fun. So, Coach, I don't have the uh, the Bulldogs schedule in front of me, but what does the Hemet non-league schedule looks lo- look like? You're going to – you're going to put pressure on me now. Do you have it? <laughs> I believe, let me, let me, let me, let me try and think of this in my brain real quick. I believe it was Rancho Mirage was first, Lakeside second, Rialto's third. Then I believe it's Adelanto fourth and the last one. Who was the last one? Um, Here, I'm going to look it up for you. Just oh, oh, uh, I know what, I know what it's on tip of my tongue. I can't, I'm going um, to do some fact checking on you right now. I know, I know those four are there, and I know the the fifth one. It's it's up there too. They went to the, they were in the same division, uh, same division as Adelanto. It just slipped my mind. Um, Here's hey, they, hey coach, uh, newsflash. Here here is the Hemet football schedule. Go ahead for the upcoming season. Uh, the Bulldogs. You guys are going to open up at home against Rancho Mirage. Rancho Mirage. Then you play at Lakeside. Lakeside at Lakeside. At, at Rialto. At Adelanto Valley. Moval, that's the other one. And then Adelanto. And then Adelanto, correct. That's it. Yeah. I couldn't remember Moval. I mean, that's that's a pretty good schedule. In fact, Moreno Valley is uh, another one of those teams that jumped into the Rain Cross Conference. Um, they'll be in the Inland Valley League, so that won't be a, directly a, a league game um, for you guys. But I think top to bottom, that's a pretty good schedule, especially those league games, man. I'm excited about those Sunbelt League games. I liked it. I liked it all. I'm just excited about playing. You know, you want your program to get better, and you're just playing different competition. But – 
you know, it, as sad as it was to leave to leave our league because you know there's some good rivalries in there, especially with uh, some of the schools from our town. It is nice to get you know play some new teams and you know different things. And coach, before I let you go, I know that you know the CIF Southern section adopted that new playoff format where. I mean, you won't know what playoff division you're going to be in until the end of the season because they will take the current season and determine if you're division one, two, three, and, and so on. You know, most coaches I've asked, you know, what do you think about that? And, that, you know, I, I get the, the normal coach answer. Hey, we're just going to play whoever's in front of us. But but that's really all you can do, right? I mean, it's it, it, you can't do anything about it. Nothing else you can do. And I used to tease with Galliano and tell him, you know, to be the man, you got to beat the man and whoever they're going to put it up. But... I think him and I were always on the same page where, you know, I don't care what seeds you are. If, if that's whoever's the best team, I'd rather just play them. Let's just go play and, and get it over with. But I, I will agree with the other coaches too, whoever they put in front of you, who you're going to play, but you can't control it. So there's no sense worrying about it. Just do the best you can do and be prepared. All right, coach. Finally, how has the Gregovich household spent quarantine time? What, what was the show that you binge watched? Did you do a honey do list? What, what have you been up to? I got to watch all of Ozark, which was nice, but I got to learn how to be a kindergarten teacher <laughs> and a third grade teacher, and oof, <laughs> different. That was much different. <laughs> so, but you know, catching up on the shows. But I felt felt bad. My wife had to go to work. You know, she works in the car industry, so she had to be at work every day. But you know, so dad, different things. Dad, it was kind of daddy fun. daycare. You were the teacher, the babysitter, the whole thing. That would be it. So, but it was fun. It was enjoyable. It was nice to get. You know, you obviously want to be back out for practice, but you know, you, you get to spend family time. So you got to cherish that family time because I don't think ever again in our lifetime is anybody going to get that much time together with family. So yeah, you know the what? Best that we can. And, and and you just put it. You know, fantastic that a lot of coaches have echoed the same thing. Like you know, no, none of us chose to be stuck at home. But if we were going to, man, what a great time to kind of re, you know reconnect with your family and, and be around them quite a bit. And even for my own family, I mean, we had practices and concerts and this <laughs> and that and tournaments for volleyball and gymnastics and this and that. And it's like, no, we we had to shut it down. Everything shut down. We had to stay home. It was it just it was the weirdest feeling. I'm telling you. And hopefully it's something that we're never going to have to go through again in our lifetime. Hopefully nobody ever has to go through that again. But, yeah. you know, I think as a country, we, we learned, you know, ways to do stuff and maybe a little bit better ways to, you know, if it does ever happen to go through it next time, but you know, make the best of what you can. I should have invested in zoom. That's, I think that's yeah. what I learned. I should have invested in zoom a long time ago. Well, we might be millionaires now if we did that, man, I wouldn't be doing the show right now. I'd be <laughs> off on some Island. <laughs> uh, you'd always do the show. You love it. We need I you. Would. You can't go nowhere. <laughs> I'd do it for free, yeah, for sure. Hey, Coach man. Gregovich, I always appreciate the time, and uh, tell Galliano when you you're going to get the bell back one day. I'm going to get the bell back one day. I'm calling it out right here, so whatever the date is, six ten twenty twenty. We're going to get it back. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, so after the show, hit them up and say when are we going to schedule that San Jacinto Hemet game? Not this year, but you know. Oh, maybe- I promise you, as, as soon as we're done, he's going to call me. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to get the thing off here. He'll call. <laughs> That's Dennis Gregovich, the head coach of the Hemet Bulldogs, showing us here on the Inland Sports Show. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Anytime, Pep. You know I love you. Yes, sir. We love you back. Uh, We'll be right back with more Inland Sports Show right after this. So with our, our, our school program, it's called BAST, the Boost Alternative School for Student Athletes. Um, we've been uh, we've had our school for about three years now. We're going to be opening up enrollment for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, and if you really want to get involved, uh, it's all referral based. Uh, you either have to uh, come speak with us directly, or if you know someone who's currently in the program. But it's a it's a great program. It's all the meat and potatoes of, uh, of just you know your your rigorous academic program and uh, a complete collegiate strength and uh, speed development program as well. Um, it's a real collegiate vibe. Um, it challenges the kids. It's not an easy program by any means, but um, you know we've had uh, a lot of growth with our student athletes as they move on to high school, whether they're going to a public school or private school. Um, it's a program that really prepares you 
not just academically, but physically for the next level. I would say the one thing that uh, we stress more than anything else is service to our customer. Make sure that they're taking care of whatever you can do to make sure that that order gets to them on time and it's the right quality and, and what they want. I've been that way since 1976. That was my goal, to reach out to local uh, sports programs and it's grown from there and we've been very, very fortunate. My grandson is right over here. He's working for us and he's going to college right now and, and uh, that's exactly what my son did 20-some uh, years ago and it keeps on going, you know. And we have customers that come in the store that it's amazing uh, people that I haven't been here since I was a little kid and I used to come in here all the time and then my now I'm bringing my son in here or, or a grandpa that's bringing his grandson in here that, that came in here when we first opened back in 76. Oh, we just feel so fortunate to have been a part of this community and this Inland Empire uh, for going into our 44th year now and um, it's just been a, a blessing. What's up, everybody? Don't forget, there's two spoiled locations now. I'm at the brand new one right off the 91 freeway at Arlington. You can spoil yourself. You can spoil your car. You come in here, 10 minutes, you're in and you're out. You're back on the road. Go check out Spoiled, local business, locally owned and operated. And they've got the location off the 215 freeway at Alessandro. And this one, the brand new one here, off of uh, the 91 at Arlington. I felt spoiled. It was great. I got in easy. I mean, the price was the best. The price is just helped me out. And, and what I really enjoyed about it is that they explained to me what was going on today. And I feel like when I walked out of here, I just felt, felt so special. I said I had a new boyfriend. His name is Foyle. <laughs> you got your flowers. Yeah, and I got yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike's Fitness Equipment Studio. It's the Inland Sports Show. So with our, our, our school program, it's called BASS, the Boost Alternative School for Student Athletes. Um, we've been, uh, we've had our school for about three years now. We're gonna be opening up enrollment for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, and if you really wanna get involved, uh, it's all referral based. Uh, you either have to uh, come speak with us directly or if you know someone who's currently in the program. But it's a it's a great program. It's all the meat and potatoes of, uh, of just, you know, your, your rigorous academic program and uh, a complete collegiate strength and uh, speed development program as well. Um, it's a real collegiate vibe. Um, it challenges the kids. It's not an easy program by any means. But, um, you know, we've had uh, a lot of growth with our student athletes as they move on to high school, whether they're going to a public school or private school. Um, it's a program that really prepares you 
not just academically, but physically for the next level. I would say the one thing that uh, we stress more than anything else is service to our customer. Make sure that they're taking care of whatever you can do to make sure that that order gets to them on time and it's the right quality and, and what they want. I've been that way since 1976. That was my goal, to reach out to local uh, sports programs and it's grown from there and we've been very, very fortunate. My grandson is right over here. He's working for us and he's going to college right now and and uh, that's exactly what my son did uh, 20 some years ago and it keeps on going, you know. And we have customers that come in the store that it's amazing uh, people that I haven't been here since I was a little kid and I used to come in here all the time and then my now I'm bringing my son in here or, or a grandpa that's bringing his grandson in here that, that came in here when we first opened back in 76. Oh, we just feel so fortunate to have been a part of this community and this Inland Empire. Uh, for going into our 44th year now, and um, it's just been a, a blessing. everybody let's wrap things up here on the inland sports show again you're watching us live on twitter we will re-air this we will premiere on youtube in just about one hour if we wrap this up quick enough it'll be 8 p.m 805 first pitch as i like to say we're always a couple minutes late uh, but before we wrap things up i did want to take a look uh, at the rest of the rain cross conference we had coach gregovich from him and on talking about the Sun Belt league because remember the rain cross conference has three leagues the ivy league the Sun Belt league and the inland valley league here is the Ivy League for football this season. Because remember, even by sport, the leagues will look different. So here's the Ivy League for football. Oh, man. Elsinore, Heritage, Notre Dame, the Rancho Verde, and Temescal Canyon. So that is the Ivy League for the Rain Cross this upcoming season. And it will have some battles for sure. You know, Rancho Verde won the last two Ivy League titles. Heritage has always been in the mix. Now you throw in Elsinore, Notre Dame, Temescal Canyon. There's going to be some fun football going down there. And then also we have the Inland Valley League. And they welcome, well, Vista Del Lago and Moreno Valley come over from the Mountain Valley League to the Inland Valley League. You also have Riverside Poly, Lakeside, and Canyon Springs. Inland Valley lost, uh, let's see, Paris. Paris went to the Mountain Pass League. Um, so we have had some some moving around a little bit. You know, North um, and Orange Vista, they're up in the Sun Belt League. So each of these leagues, it's so hard to keep track of from year to year. But these are the football leagues for the upcoming season for the Rain Cross Conference. And I think next week, um, we may even take a closer look at the, uh, <clears throat> the Arrowhead Conference. The Arrowhead Conference combining Carter High School uh, with the San Andreas League and the Sunkiss League. I know I put some out there. Uh, on IEMG. We do all their sports content over there for IEMG TV as well. And uh, the teams for the, let's see, the, the Arrowhead Conference is Sunkiss League and then San Andreas and then the Skyline League, the Skyline League as well. And in that top league, <clears throat> which is the Sunkiss League, it is Kaiser, San Gorgonio, Grand Terrace, and Carter High School. Those are your four teams in the Sunkiss League for the Arrowhead Conference. Uh, again, a big thanks to all of our guests tonight here on the Inland Sports Show. That would be Dennis Gregovich, him at football coach, uh, Doug Souls, Great Oak Cross Country coach, 
and David Patrick, the UC Riverside men's basketball coach. Big, big thanks to our sponsors who have stuck with us. Spoiled, quick, quality oil change off the 91 at Arlington, off the 215 at Alessandro. Hey, we're all getting out and about, right? We're reopening the economy. If you're out there, you're driving around, you probably need an oil change. In fact, maybe you haven't driven your car in three months. Still might need an oil change, right? It's been three months, so check out out on Spoiled. Uh, they're going to keep you safe. They're going to do it right. They take all the precautions. Ken Sporting Goods, you can still get your face coverings at Ken Sporting Goods. Boost Performance Training, they still have a couple spots left for their private school for the upcoming school year. So check out BoostTrainingSystems.com. That is the website. We love you, Ray Bass, and your entire team at Boost Training. And again, still some spots open for their private schools. You can go to Boost and train and go to school. It's awesome. And, and finally, Mike's Fitness Equipment. As we reopen the economy, you're going to want to go out there and get your fitness equipment, whether it's for your garage or maybe you're an athletic director trying to get it for your uh, your high school gym. They can hook it up as well. That's Mike's Fitness Equipment. And JoJo's Grill of Dog. I'm going to be at JoJo's real, real soon. You can guarantee that. My name is Pep Fernandez, and we will see you next time on the Inland Sports Show. God bless everybody. What's up, everybody? Don't forget, there's two spoiled locations now. I'm at the brand new one right off the 91 freeway at Arlington. You can spoil yourself. You can spoil your car. You come in here, 10 minutes, you're in and you're out. You're back on the road. Go check out Spoiled, local business, locally owned and operated. And they've got the location off the 215 freeway at Alessandro. And this one, the brand new one here, half of uh, the 91 at Arlington. I felt spoiled. It was great. I got in easy. I mean, the price was the best. The price is just helped me out. And, and what I really enjoyed about it is that they explained to me what was going on today. And I feel like when I walked out of here, I just felt, felt so special. I said I had a new boyfriend. His name is Spoil. <laughs> you got your flowers.